So I'm at CTPE Engineering in Mildon Hall. I'm going to talk to Chris Taylor in a minute, who's the owner of the business. But before we do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about the journey they've been on with Haas, starting on the turn-in side. You can see here, this is an SL10 turn-in centre. This was one of their first machines. And, and then here behind us, we have an ST10, which was then the next investment on a turn-in side. But more interestingly than that, they've really gone up in capability with their latest purchase, which is their ST10 Y-axis. So let's go and see with, speak to Chris about why they bought it. So Chris, this ST10Y, latest addition to your turn-in, why did you go for a machine with such capability? Um, well, for start, we wanted a machine that uh, would try and take out some of the milling operations that we were having to do as a, as a separate operation. The, the Y-axis gives you the capabilities of producing slots and, and irregular shapes off centre line, uh, which obviously you can't do with just a, a non-Y-axis machine. I was going to say that, I was going to say mill drill is one thing which this machine has got. Yeah. Y-axis is the next leap. Yeah. Was, was that a big decision for you or was it well, quite easy? Um, well, I think it was quite easy because I think when we looked at uh, what was available and what we wanted to do, making the investment uh, with a Y-axis machine gave us, we knew that basically any job that come along uh, in the future that we, we, we weren't currently doing, that we were going to have the capabilities of, of uh, being able to cope with. Okay, tell me about the real-time benefits of that though. Are, is there a is there a scenario where you've got a part and it used to take you 10 minutes and now it takes you three? This component that we're running on here at the moment, um, uh, it had a first stop turn uh, operation and then it would have to go milling to have all the holes drilled uh, in it um, So, and, and the square put on. So um, basically we've taken that, that operation completely out and that's completed on just the one machine. We must have reduced the cycle times by at least 30% by, by doing it all on this machine. So not quite 70 like I suggested, but no. not far off? No. <laughs> now what about milling? People do ask questions about milling on a lathe. How do you find the milling on this machine? Is it as good as taking a part off and putting it on your mini mill? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it, it's not a milling machine. It is a, a lathe um, with, with mill capacity. Uh, but we've done some fairly complex parts on here uh, to quite fine limits, uh, surface finishes, and you know, quality has been excellent. And uh, as long as you, you know, um, are realistic about cycle times you know you can achieve some really good quality parts and then the control for you that that's a big thing isn't it here yeah i think that's one of the main reasons that you'll see so many hash machines you know here uh, you know in our workshop is because um i was the, the hash controller we, we had the, our very first one in 2001 um and i think it's very difficult to come away from something that you know is that user friendly and that good so you say about the first machine that that was a lathe wasn't it you had it so you yeah. started your journey with, with an SL10 yeah an SL10 we had in 2001 and you progress through now to going from two axis right the way up to this multi-function yeah. four axis lathe yeah that's correct yeah and some of the parts you're making we've spoken about the material are you doing aluminium steels plastics um, yeah, high performance plastics, aluminium, sort of non-ferrous sort of materials. We do do some stainless steels and titanium we've uh, machined on here. Um, but general steels, we're, we're, it's not the forte for our t industry, uh, you know, as we work in the sort of medical field and scientific, general t uh, carbon steels are not, not something that we get involved in. And the other two machines behind here, the older ones, they seem to be Y-axis and mill drill too? I'm, I'm not sure whether we're going to go for another Y-axis, but we definitely need a sub-spindle machine. That's, that's the next stage for us, uh, because uh, there are a lot of jobs where we're obviously having to perform second op operation uh, turning uh, ops, whereas if we had a sub-spindle, obviously we could cut that out. So th that's probably where our next step is going to be. Alex, you've got a lot of Haas milling machines in your machine shop as well. The one that jumps out at me here is the VF3 SS. What are the benefits to your business with this model? Um, yeah, well the VF3 SS was purchased in 2011 and obviously the, the main benefits over one of the standard hash machines is the fact that it's got a 12,000 RPM spindle um, with 30 horsepower so um, it enables us to run at higher feed rates and achieve better surface finishes. Also the tool changer, it's a 24 pocket tool changer side mount, it's a very quick tool to tool time, it's only 1.2 seconds. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's been an excellent addition to our workshop. Yeah. So you had the VF2 before, yep. was the reason that you then went for the, the 3 because it was a bigger machine for one 
and then secondly the SS because you wanted to get parts off the machine quicker. Uh, yeah, exactly. Basically, um, for the for the job that we run most of the time on this machine, we, we originally were making it on the VF2, and now basically with the free, it's enabled us to use a larger blank, um, so we can produce more components. We can now have 12 components off in one operation rather than uh, nine, which we were previously doing. Let's pick this up here. If you want to pick this component up yep. here, so we can see for the camera, just tell us you, you're doing all, all the. There's a lot of metal removal there. Yeah. Um, there's, so there's 12 of these components on one billet. Um, and basically, there's, there, there's, there's deep pockets in here uh, which are quite tied up on a tight tolerance, um, 20 microns on the depth. Um, so basically, we, we machine all 12 pockets and then the individual parts are profiled and machined out. Um, and then, and then once, once I come off the machine there at this stage, um, we then um, individually cut them out on a bandsaw and then they go onto the VF2 for the second operation. Now I know from looking at the control on the machine, you're actually running at full 12,000 RPM yeah, speed, correct, yeah. and also at 10 meters a minute on the milling, correct? Yep, that's correct, yeah, 10 meters a minute um, feed rate with a trochoidal high speed milling tool path. So let's cut to the chase then. The VF2 was machining this previously to so come on the SS. How yeah. much faster are you getting these per part off the machine percentage wise now as a result of the VF3 SS? Um, well it's actually about 16 minutes um, per, per part faster um, which, which we, we recommend is it's about 25% it's about um, increase in productivity. And that productivity comes not just from the spindle speed like you've said it's the fact it's got a faster tool changer, yep. it's also got faster rapids is that correct? That's correct yes 35 meters on the super speed models compared to 25 on the standard models so yeah and that, that helps a lot when you're when you've got a meter in the extra travel, um, that helps you get around the job very quickly. So it's not just machining centers, it's mini mills, so let's go and have a quick look at those. Okay. So you've got three mini mills then here, Alex. What do you like about these machines? Um, what we like about them is they're nice and compact um, and they offer us to get many machines in a small area, many spindles in a small area. Um, they're brilliant for producing our smaller components that we make. What are you actually machining? You talk about small parts, but what sort of materials are you tackling? The various different engineering plastics um, and some stainless steel and, and aluminium is, is, a, is a big bulk of our workload, yeah. So we see lots of mini mills in the marketplace. In your opinion, what's the, what's the fundamental difference between what a vertical machining centre can do and what a mini mill can do for you here at CTPE? Um, well, to be fair, we class them as a full BMC. Um, they, they have full, full capabilities as, as what, what a larger machine would offer, just in a compact footprint. Um, so everything's on there, tool changer, rigid tapping, everything. And can, you, can they handle the same programs? If you, if you had a program on the VMC and you, or on the VF2, for example, could you put it onto this machine? Yeah, exactly, yep. Yeah. Um, com completely the same on the Has Control. It run on all, all vertical machines, and it's including the mini mills. So that works vice versa. So if you started off on here as a prototype part, doing the programming, you could literally take it off of this machine and put it onto the VF2 or VF3. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we do, we do interchange a lot of the programs and a lot of the programs that were originally written on these machines, when, when we invested in the, the larger VMCs, um, we, we transferred them over and then edited them from there. And they've got a tool changer on these. Is that enough tools for you within that umbrella? Um, yeah, it's a 10 pocket tool changer on the mini mill is standard. Uh, and for, for most of our small components, that is enough. Um, Obviously, the, the investment that we made in the VF2 and the VF3 Superspeed um, gave us more tool capacity um, for some of our larger, more complex parts. But these are um, pl plenty suitable for our more smaller components, yeah. And I think it's very evident when we see lots of mini mills around how, how well, if, you, if you've got a smaller machine shop but you want more spindles, they're perfect. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You can fit, you can cram them in if you like, and yeah, they're brilliant. Make more parts, make more money. Exactly, yep. Yeah.